Well, good afternoon. About 2.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday, the 1st of October. Happy fall to you folks and uh, to all of us. As I said in a, in a previous video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some nuggets on starting your own business. <clears throat> As I said, when I got out of college and graduate school and internship, I ended up a department head of microbiology in a hospital pathology lab. You know, my job was to look at every sample of a specimen that came in, grow the bugs, that's what we call them, bacteria germs for you guys, grow the bugs in incubators and find out what was hurting you as a person and then test it for antibiotics or other drug sensitivities and then inform the doctor what the best course of action was to treat that particular problem of you. And, and it was an exciting thing. We were also a teaching hospital, so there was a constant stream of young people, people from high school who didn't go to college, who wanted to be technicians in that field. And, and we trained them. I trained in microbiology, special chemistries, and uh, sometimes we'd cover for other things. To be a, a laboratory medical professional, you had to have a BA degree minimum to be in charge of a department, and you had to know everything in the hospital lab, how to calibrate these high-tech machines that do all the blood sampling and evaluations and stuff, um, how to run electrophoresis and a t blood bank hematology. Yeah, I said, take blood for blood donors. All that stuff we had to learn because it's tough to teach it and do it when you're on call um, if you don't know how and when people who are in trouble and trauma are depending on you to know how. Okay, enough about that. But I had a dream. I had a dream to own my own business, and there were several reasons. After several years at that job, um, I didn't get the position I really studied hard extra for in the internship, and that was nuclear medicine. They gave that to a technician who was going to work under, under the regular chemistry department. I was doing special chemistries called electrophoresis. And so I wasn't happy with that, uh, even though I liked microbiology. It was my second favorite, you know, and that was good. I got frustrated like people you may be in your job. You know, I got sent to all these programs and, and health fairs and seminars away from the office uh, and learned about new media to grow bugs into that would make it streamlined, easier, faster, more efficient. But the hospital pathologist, who was an older guy, just wasn't going to change the old routine. It was very frustrating to see new stuff, kind of like today, seeing how to be on social media, how to get customers online marketing, where what it used to be was, you know, go to a networking event, spend a ton of money on gas and or other things, and meet people and see if you could find someone who really was important. In other words, we were going out hunt, hunting for business as opposed to seeing the law of attraction and fishing for business. Uh, and even so, so I got frustrated. I had, in the meantime, developed a great hobby, passed down from my dad, I'm sure, he was a surgeon, go into a greenhouse and just get involved in the extra oxygen and, and the unwinding from his day, because his day was always pretty intense. And he had to go out late at night to do charts. Back then, they didn't have some of the things they have now. When I go to a doctor now for Lori, they walk in with a small laptop, and, and that's how they walk in. And, you know, and they set it down, and, and they're typing what they're talking to you as they do it, or hitting certain points so that you answer questions. And everything's recorded every place it has to be, and that's it. Well, my dad had to go back and dictate all that stuff. So I picked up the hobby of growing houseplants and then, event, then got newly married way back then. And uh, this is in the mid-70s, so I'm older than some of you. But you'd never know it, right? <laughs> I got more energy than people half my age. And, and drive and ambition, <clears throat> and that's great. That's what my family's depending on. And so I got kind of good at growing plants, approached it from a scientific way, and knew all the plants by their botanical names, which was Latin. I never took Latin, but it was easy to figure that out and read everything I could find at that point in time about houseplants. What I did not know, and now I'm more aware of today, is timing. Sweeping across the country was a wave of growing houseplants. Started in California, seems to always be that way, running across the country, and I happened to be just on the front end of that curve. 
which is the best place to be because you don't have to be too smart to make a buck at a trend that's just happening and going to unfold for a few years or a bunch of years. You know, kind of like a basketball in a hose, the front end of the basketball is just moving is the way to be because if you're on the back end, you better be really good at what you do because the trend is diminishing. Uh, and you have to work harder every year to make the same money. So I didn't know that at the time, but I had a passion to have my own business, make my own decisions. Um, the hospital that was, I was working at was about to merge with the other one, a larger hospital, um, not so Christian oriented. And there was already a department head of microbiology at that other hospital pathology lab with a few more years seniority. So I might have gotten bumped because it would have been a redundant position. So I, I saw this and I said, now's the time. I didn't know. I drove, was driving around one evening with my wife saying, hey, you know, uh, I think I'm going to write a letter of resignation and quit my job. Well, sarcastically, of course, as everyone was, except for my parents, who were always great encouragers, I was fortunate. But she said, sure, go ahead. Well, I took that as a go, even though I understood the tone of voice, it wasn't. Hey, I'm not supposed to interpret someone else's words. And... So I wrote my letter of resignation that evening, which was uh, early February, middle of winter. Turned it in the next day, and by February 28th, I walked away from that supposedly great paying job. And it was okay. There's a, a, lot of some, a few other reasons, but this video is probably going to be long enough. And I walked away, and, but I had saved $5,000 over the course of two or three years of my salary put away as an emergency fund. And for me, this was an emergency. I had no business training. I didn't know how to write a business plan, but I wasn't borrowing any money. So I didn't even think about that. But I did plan. I had my $5,000 budgeted down to the penny, just about. It provided me all the renovations. I was able to have Family and friends help do the work of the renovations, electricity, carpentry, uh, things of that nature, for free. That was great because people were excited about me now, even though they still had jobs. They were excited because I already had walked away. So, uh, you know, I was kind of in their hands, if you will. Um, so, I bought inventory. I bought a used van for supplying inventory to the, to the store. And all the accessories that a, I thought a plant business growing them indoors should have. I had gotten really good at growing under fluorescent lights, which is a really good way to grow plants inside. Again, when you're indoors, you have a two-dimensional through a window light swing. When you have outside or under fluorescent tubes, you have a three-dimensional light source better. And with the, the fluorescent light being less intense than sunlight, you can actually control a lot more things, and if you're a scientist, controlling of variables is a good idea. And so we built all the display cases in our store with tons of fluorescent lighting, that white plastic, you know, quarter-inch square grating that they put sometimes over a fluorescent bulb so you don't look at them directly. That was the floor, so I could water, have it drip down. They were all fiberglass and plastic lined so that I could keep water there without getting too bad. Once I learned about activated charcoal prevents uh, mold and mildew and stuff, we kind of layered a little bit of that underneath it so I didn't have to take them apart and clean them, but that was eventually. And so it was down to the penny and we had a great... I greased over the windows of the rent, that place that we found, so that you couldn't really see inside, but you could get a blurred vision. I didn't know at the time that that was called marketing curiosity approach. And we had a great friend that was an artist who would draw, she wanted exposure, and so she would draw these incredible, kind of tree hugger, earthy, but that was the trend then, um, ads, I'm going to say quarter page most of the time, they weren't as expensive then as it is today, but it still was money then, and uh, we just had incredible uh, people wondering what was going on in there. Then the sign went up called Plants Alive was the name of the, the store and the business. And uh, that's what we did. And I gotta tell you, and I'm, as I move on through this, that the first day, my goal, let me back up a second. The, my goal was to go to work at 10, get done around five-ish, work 
us five and a half to six days a week and travel the world with making millions. Well, let me tell you, I knew nothing about retail or trends of the horticultural industry at all. And it didn't work out that way at the beginning. And this is the fun part. When I went to work my very first day, I was the only employee. My wife was a school teacher, so we were counting on that to help in case my thing didn't go, because the odds are against new businesses start up. Even today, 80, 85% will fail in the first five years and 80% of the rest in the next five. And um, that's just the reality if you don't plan. And from what I discovered, being funded for at least six months to a year after you start. That's the key why most people fail is education and marketing. Marketing, not business, marketing. You know your craft, but do you know how to run a business? And funding. And I didn't know either of those at the time. But I know a lot about them now. <clears throat> And so my walk to, my walk to work, uh, my apartment was pretty close to the downtown, and uh, to my amazement and, and total belief in what we did, not knowing what we did, we hit timing, we hit advertising, we hit the curiosity approach with the smudged windows, we hit all of the buttons of the populace of our fourth largest city in Maine, without even knowing most of it, except for the advertising. I thought that was pretty cool. And... There was a line waiting to get in my store, mostly women, about a quarter of a mile long in April 15th. This is my opening day. I couldn't believe it. I mean, this is a huge wrap around the stores downtown on Main Street, maybe an eighth of a mile. I'm, I'm not sure judging that, but it was a long, long line. It took hours for people to get through. And they basically cleaned out my inventory that first day in business. And so I was up at midnight in my truck down to Boston at 4 a.m. because the wholesale market for plants and flowers, like it is worldwide, opens at 4 a.m. and it closes at noontime because everybody who's going to buy supplies on a regular basis has a business to run and they want that inventory right away. And uh, my mother-in-law, who knew nothing about what I was doing but she knew about business, spearheaded, held the store open for me the second day when I got back around 12.30, so I had put in a nine-hour day already, uh, and it was lunchtime. She said it was the same thing that second day, a line all the way around the main street waiting to get in, and we didn't have that much left. And it was like that for about a week, and then the line would, would kind of shrunk really quickly after that first week. Blew me away, you know, but we hit it right. So, so what, what's the nugget here? Finances, save some money if you're going to start a business. If not, find a lenient lender. It could be parents, friends, somebody who won't hold you to a payment initially. We'll borrow it if you, if you, if you think you can do it. Uh, you know, And then budget that into what you think you need. We did research for weeks before I left my job on going to the local greenhouses, writing down the names and addresses of companies that were supplying clay pots, plastic pots, all kinds of the accessories. And we got in touch with them so that we knew ahead of time where I was going to go in Massachusetts to pick it up, what it was going to cost pretty much. We had it laid out. And that would, I would definitely guess, say that you should do that. And, and then um, get some marketing in your head. You know, I I'm, I'm, have become an, uh, an enthusiast of the Empower Network marketing platform for several reasons, but number one, it will help any business get out there and get a presence online fairly quickly. And online is where it's at today. Back when I started in the mid-70s, there was no online. There was no internet till 94. And there was for military, but we won't get, get into that. And so, so you have to find a way to reach out as best that you can. And um, so that was the first day, first month we did really well. The first year, we did about $28,000 in business. And what slowed down the progress, because we were on a trajectory because of that first day and planning, um, we were on a trajectory that was just nothing but up. I'll get to that in a sec. And we did 28000 a year that first year. And that was in you know, 1975. That's worth maybe double that today. And uh, I had no employees, but me and mother-in-law helped out and, and my wife on weekends because she was a school teacher. What I learned is that some planning on the industry you're going into. In other words, I knew how to grow plants. I know how to take care of them. I knew how to doctor them if they got in trouble, and plants will. They're a living thing, so they will have issues. Uh, and I got really good at that, but I didn't know anything about business. I know that's redundant here, but I'm driving a point. Get some education in the field you want to get into. Example, not other than mine. You're a plumber. 
You want to start your own plumbing business. You got a job and you're going to quit and do it yourself. Just knowing the craft isn't enough, especially today, because the consumer is so well informed and educated. You got to have more than that. You got to know about business. And there's some great stuff to handle. You can comment below if you want to know some more stuff. I'll, I'll get resources that I have. I love sharing and connecting people because my passion is helping the SMB space. So the summer came of that year of 1975, and I could sit outside across the little small roadway in the city park, and I was right in the middle of downtown, and we had a city park, typical New England, on a bench for five hours and read a book and never hear my phone ring, never have a customer. I didn't realize the industry cyclic process. In the summertime in Maine, which is fleeting, remember I said earlier, Maine is winter for six months, cold for eight months, and the summer's fleeting. So people are on the golf course or boating or other stuff, but they aren't going downtown to shop for accessories. Food, yeah. You know, and so no business. And so we realized immediately we need to diversify into some other fingers, branches is what we called them then. And our ad started to be a huge tree with other branches. The first one was Plants Alive, the trunk. And then we went into outdoor landscaping because I remembered that my dad, having six children, dad and mom, had a built-in landscaping crew, a built-in yachting crew for the boat that he bought, and, 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 and a built-in crew for almost everything. And we would go around with a small John Deere tractor and do our own landscaping because my dad liked gardening. And we learned how to dig holes, what kind of hole to dig, how to use humus and other stuff, how to do it right so that the plants would survive, how to water them, how to step on it if you watered it halfway so that it would squeeze out as much air as possible so you don't destroy the root system initially on transplant. All kinds of, uh, all kinds of methods and processes that are, are essential. And so we hung out the shingle, one branch landscaping, and it worked really well. The hard part was finding a crew every summer and then letting them all go in the fall because I didn't need that many people around for a plant business in the, summer, in the wintertime, in the fall. Then we also learned that there were, in the industry, cyclic holidays because the horticultural industry was classified into the flower shop business, which we eventually opened up that one. That was the last one. The third of the division we did was interior plantscaping. And that became 35, 38% of our business every year for quite a while. You know, then the, again, the, the trend was for all this stuff, put plants where employees are, fill the areas where the cubicles are with hanging stuff so that the, ha the employees are happy, extra oxygen's in the air, people feel good, they'll work better, that was the theory. And we did lobbies of some of the corporations that were in our area and lots of insurance offices with tons of cubicles hung stuff up. We even did the artwork on the walls and got contracted to do the whole interior design, which was fun. It really was fun. And we had to build three greenhouses to support that because we would have maintenance contracts. Someone would go in, it was me alone at the beginning, and water the plants and make sure they were good. And they just eventually didn't do well because of AC and stuff like that and, and fluctuating in, in light duration. So we'd pull out, the, pull out the ones that were there, put them in the greenhouse for rejuvenation, put the new ones in. So it required some investment for sure, but no investment, no gain. <clears throat> you never look at stuff like that as expenses. Always investment in your future, looking forward. And then the fourth thing we went into, besides plants for your house and how to do that, interior landscaping for businesses, and now we were getting um, landscaping outside, then third one's landscaping interiorly, but now we were getting called for custom interior consultations for people's homes to have plant, planting areas made, especially if they were doing renovations or stuff. <clears throat> and that was fabulous. You know, people just always called us at the last minute when the contractor had put a big brick planter that would hold a thousand bucks worth of materials for the first time around and just supporting it later. And, you know, they didn't think about light and me till that was, that was already in the design process and oftentimes built. So I'd go in there and I said, if you want your plants to just bend like that towards the nearest window, that's what you're going to get. You should have asked me first. Eventually they learned. So in the architectural phase, we got called in at the beginning for those people who wanted to do that. So we would recommend, if nothing else, puts a bunch of overhead floodlights recess in the ceiling or fancy pendants, whatever, so that the plants would at least be straight and not get really stretchy. The lower the light, plants stretch between their leaf points and they don't look so good. 
And then we had some two, actually, competing, actually, which was an interesting situation. It's like being dual agency in real estate, I guess. There was two big, huge beer wine distributor, distributorships in our area. One was a Budweiser, one was a Schlitz, and whatever else the subsidy products came around for that. Soda, as well as beer and wine. And they were both million-dollar guys, real successful. And they would throw tasting parties in wine as wine became more popular and would hire us to do a theme for that thing. So not only did we have to think about it, get it approved, but we had to do whatever it took. At that point in time, paying attention to trends, because one of the things I did a lot then, once I realized marketing was a key, is I went to every seminar I could get my hands on or knew about for learning from other flower and plant vendors within a, a four-state region. If it was four hours away or less, I'm going to be there for that. And we learned a lot of stuff. <clears throat> Target marketing was one. I might get into that another day because I got a feeling this video is already long enough. And uh, in fact, why don't I stop right here and I'll continue what we did to make Plants Alive the most successful business of our type in our city for over 20 years. A lot of competition tried. Everyone failed. We eventually beat out the flower shop business that had been there, been there for almost 60 years. And I'll tell you about that on another day. Hey, pass a smile on somebody who needs one. You have a great one. Ciao.